four, three, two, one. So this is welcome to Brookfield Community Media on the meeting of the Brookfield Ag Commission of February 18th at 6.30 in Town Hall, where we're gonna to talk tonight on the keeping of chickens. So if the committee would agree that we move from our regular order of business, which we'll finish at the end, uh, we'll quickly move to Roseanne. Uh, Tebow and her uh, works or, uh, efforts to educate us on the farming of chickens. And so if, if you hadn't noticed, we made the Quaybog Current, and we were front page news, Roseanne, on the Brookfield oh, Citizens. So there you go. So with that, without further ado, we'll have Roseanne join us and uh, give us a little bit of education on the keeping of chickens. Well, thank you for inviting me to talk about how to raise chickens. When you decide you want to raise chickens, the first thing you need to do is check with your town boards to see what the regulations are in your area. Some, some cities and some towns will allow both chickens and roosters, and others will only allow chickens. So you need to check the regulations and the laws to see what's appropriate for your area. Then you have to decide, what do you want to raise the chickens for? Do you want to raise them for eggs? meat, uh, eggs and meat, um, or do you want to raise them for, sh for show? You know, do you have a child that wants to show a 4-H project? So you need to uh, inv investigate what type of bird you want to raise. If you have a child that's going to be working with the chickens, you need to find, get a breed that is fairly quiet, because some breeds are very flighty. Uh, so you need to decide what kind of a bird you want to get. Any suggestions there? The Rhode Island, the, the birds for, like the Rhode Island Reds and the Bard Rocks are good birds for this area because they're very winter hardy. <coughs> it's a good bird. Uh, the White Leghorns are very, very flighty. They lay a good egg, but they're very, very flighty. Um, also, if you want to do birds only for meat, you want to do broilers, before you get your, your, your chickens, you should find out where you can have them processed. There aren't too many places around that will process your birds. And with, with the broilers, they eat a lot, but when they reach the point where it's time to dress them off, if you don't have a place where you can bring them, they'll, they'll keep eating, and sometimes they'll eat so much that they get so heavy that the legs will break on them, or they could have a heart attack. So you can't, a broiler that you're going, or a bird you're going to raise for, for meat, you need to dress it off you know, within the time span that's, that's appropriate. Also, when, you, when you're, you're going to buy baby chicks, you need to buy them from a reputable source. Uh, there are several hatcheries that you can order chicks from through the mail, and they do come right to the post office, and they will call you and say, your chicks are here. But you have to decide, do you want straight runs? Straight runs mean you don't know what you're getting. You're probably getting hens, you're getting hens and roosters. So if you want hens, you need to say you want pullets or you want cockles. You, don't, you need to specify what you want for the birds that you're ordering. The best time to get your chicks is March and April. It's Feb January and February is pretty cold, but March and April are a good time. It's starting to warm up, yet it's not too too warm where you have to worry about you know diseases. Um, also, what size? How many do you want? And if you have, if you're only buying birds for your family, if you have a family of four, six birds may be enough. And six is the minimum that you can order. Six birds is the minimum that you can order. Okay, so you've decided to, to get some checks uh, and you need to get your brooder ready. You need to have your, your area ready. Ideally, you need a, a circular area, you know, because one problem with chicks is if you have, like if you're putting the chicks in a cage, they tend and, and they get frightened, they'll run for the corners. So if you have a circular area, there are no corners and it's safer. Last spring, I used a child's swimming pool and that worked out pretty good. So what you need to do to get your brooder ready, you have your circular area, whether it's, it's a, a tub or what's that, the swimming pool that I used. You can put shavings on the bottom, but you don't want the birds eating the shavings, so you can cover it with newspapers. And one problem with chicks, their legs are so fragile that they, 
sometimes what they will what will happen is they'll get they, what they call spaddle legs where the legs will, will they'll split on them. So if you cover your newspaper, I use the paper <coughs> towels because it gives you more uh, of something for the chicks to grip on. So, okay. So also you need to get your, your all your equipment ready. This is a waterer. And, and you need to, when you're watering your chickens, you're giving water for your chickens, they're babies, your chicks that you're getting through the mail are babies. So the first few days you should give them warm water because they are babies. If you're ordering them through a catalog, so, you know, and they've been, you know, in the post office for, uh, in travel and in the post office, they may need some electrolytes when you get them, you know, the, ch the chicks can go for up to 48 hours without eating. The last thing that the chick does before it breaks through the shell is that it eats up all the yolk and eats up everything that's in the, in the egg. So you can go, they can go up to 48 hours, some a little longer without eating. But sometimes the trip to your house is kind of rough, so they may, you can always add a little electrolytes to, their, to the water, and that will give them a little extra. Also, when you're feeding, you need some kind of a feeder, and this is a small, small chick feeder. When, you, when you're feeding your chicks, you need to start them on chick starter, and usually they recommend you use the chick starter that has amprolium in it, and amprolium is to prevent coccidiosis, and coccidiosis is a form of diarrhea that the chicks get, so they usually recommend the chick starter with the, the amprolium. If you are going to raise organic chick chickens, then you could use a chick starter without the amprolium in it. But they do, rec they, would rec they do recommend that you use the regular chick starter with the amprolium in it to help prevent coccidiosis. Uh, as they get older, or if you have a larger flock, this is another water that you could use. And this is a different type of feeder. There are several different types of feeders and waterers that you can get. But the important thing with a waterer, when you have chicks, you don't want to use something like this because if the chick gets in here, they'll drown. Okay, so you need to use something where the chicks can't get into the waterer. Also, if you're getting ducks, ducks will drown because they don't have, they have the downy feathers and they don't have natural oils in the feathers. So chicks, when you first get them, they may drown if they get into a tub of water. So even, I mean, even the ducks, if you're getting baby ducks, they need to have something where they're not going to climb into it and drown. You need to keep them warm. So you need a brood of light. Okay, there's, there's two different types of bulbs that you can use. This is clear bulb and this is a red, red bulb. They're both the same wattage, they're both 250. When you first get, when you get your chicks, you need to keep them warm and they usually recommend starting out like at 95 degrees. And you, when you set up your light, you want to measure like from the, about eight, 18 inches, fr, you know, from the bottom top of where your chicks are. Uh, so you're starting out with a 95 degree temperature. And then what they recommend is like a week, every week you should decrease the temperature by five degrees. But the, you should be watching the chicks. Don't, don't just go, oh, it, today it's seven days now, I've had the chicks, I'm gonna you know, raise the, the, the light. You have to watch your chicks. If you find that the chicks are hugging the side of your container, then they're probably too warm. If they're, if they're all grouped together underneath the light, they're probably too cold and you need, they, they, need to be, um, they need more warmth. So you need to watch your chicks. That's your better indication rather than just saying, you know. It's Monday. It's Monday, it's, mon yeah, it's Monday. So you need to watch the chicks. They'll tell you if they're too hot or if they're too cold. Um, they need enough space. They need enough space so that they, they can run around and eat and drink. Um, so you make sure they have enough space. They act, because you don't want the chicks, if they're too crowded, they tend to both peck, peck at each other. Um, and if they peck at each other and one of them has a little spot of blood on them, they, they're cannibals, so the other chicks will go after them. So one of the benefits of the red bulb is that everything looks red. So if there's a chick or something that has some blood on it, 
they can't tell because everything looks red. And also the red bulb will keep the, you'll keep the flock quieter. You know, they're not as jumpy. The red does something that keeps them quieter. One problem that you can run into with new chicks is they call it pasting. What happens when they move their bowels, instead of it falling on to the ground, it will stick to their bottom. And if you find that your chicks have a little bit of, of manure on their bottom, you can just take some warm water and wash that off. It'll come right off, just wash it right off. Otherwise, uh, you may lose them if you don't get, take it off. Okay, so you've had your, your chicks uh, in, in your container and you've decided that, oh, you, you want to keep the lights on the chicks until like the temperature, their temperature is the same as the outside temperature. So if it's 75 degrees and you've been raising your light so it's 75 degrees in, inside where the chicks are, then you can take the light off and it's probably time to put them in the coop where, wherever you're going to put them. When you've decided to, to move them, so you're going to move your chicks and you're going to put them in, in your permanent location. Uh, so you need to make sure and provide fresh water and food for them. So, so you're moving your chicks, they've gotten bigger, you're putting them in a bigger location, so you're probably going to use a bigger feeder and a bigger water. It's a good idea to put the feeder and the water that they've been used to for a couple days in with them when, when you're putting them in the new location. That, because they're used to the, you know, what they've had when, when they were chicks, so as they're getting bigger, you know, put, them in, in, put these in so that um, they, they're used to it. Um, when you put your food and water in, for the chicks in your coop, you want to make sure that it's less than 10 feet apart. Both the food and the water need to be within a 10 foot space. You don't want it, you know, to put the food in one room and then the water in another. It needs to be less than 10 feet apart so that they can have some food and then have some drink. Um, you want, when you're you're putting them in the permanent location, you want to make sure that you have enough good bedding to keep them warm. You know, in, in shavings is the best. You can use all kinds of things. You can use shavings, you can use hay, you can use all kinds of bedding. But shavings is probably the best bedding to use for your, for your chickens. If you have a new, new flock of chicks and you have an old flock of chickens, uh, you don't want to put the new chicks in with your old chickens, okay, because the older ones will bite them, they'll kill them. So you need, to, if, if you only have one room and you have to put, eventually have to have both uh, the, the new chicks with the older chicks together, you can put a piece of, some wiring in between so that they're not, they're in the same room, but they're not together so that the, the older chickens will get used to the younger ones and the newer chicks and then eventually you can re remove that wire and hopefully they'd be okay. If you're going to put, do that, they'll do it at night when it's dark. That way the new chicks, uh, the older ones, will, won't fight them. Also, uh, when you're building, when you have, if, if you have a building already uh, built, uh, there's nothing you can do. But if you've decided you're going to build yourself a coop, you want to uh, build it so that the windows and the doors are facing south. Okay, that way in the winter they're getting as much sunlight as they can. Also, if you have your building a, a coop or if you have an existing building that you're turning into a coop, you can make a small door for the, for the chickens. So you have a door for you to go in and out, but instead of having to leave that door open all day long, you can make a small door like you know, 12 by 14 so that the chickens can go in and out and you can open it up during the day and they'll need, you could also make a ramp so that the chickens can walk from the building outside. That way you don't have to keep your door wide open. 
You, in, the, in your chicken coop, you need good ventilation. Uh, you need fresh air that needs fresh air. The fresh air will help remove the heat. It'll help remove the moisture that's in the air, and it'll help uh, remove uh, uh, um, like any of the harmful gases and things that the chickens produce. If you walk into your barn and you smell ammonia, that is like a danger sign. It says, oh, there's something wrong in here. Usually, if you're smelling ammonia, it's because you need more ventilation, or your floor could be wet, and you need to uh, you know, clean it up. But uh, you should not smell ammonia with the chickens. That's what people say, oh, I can't stand chickens because I said ammonia smell. But you should not have an ammonia smell. If you have an ammonia smell, that's a sign that says there's something wrong. <laughs> Okay, what, feeding your chickens. So for the first eight weeks with your chicks, you're feeding them chick starter. So from about week eight <coughs> until they start laying, you're going to be giving them grow a, a grower feed. And then once they start laying, or once they're about to start laying, then you can go to a layer feed. Now there's different layer feeds, there's different types. There's mash, there's pellets, and then there's a crumble. Okay, so. It, whatever feed you decide to feed is purely up to you. Okay, it's purely up to you. They both, the ingredients in, in whether it's a mash, a, a crumble, or a pellet is the same, but it's, it's really up to you. In another thing that you can give your chickens too is scratch, especially now in the winter. Giving them scratch, scratch has, is corn, wheat, and oats. It, it's good for them to be, get scratch in the winter because it helps them keep warm, especially now with our winter so cold, it helps them keep warm. If you're feeding anything other than the processed feeds, your, your birds need to be receiving grit. Grit is like, if, if you let your birds out and they're walking about the yard, they're going to pick up little pebbles because they have no teeth. So it will help the grit, they need the grit to help, the grit is like their teeth. It, it breaks up the food. So if you're giving your birds anything other than the processed feed, like the scratch, uh, they need grit. And there's different types of grit. If, for your young chicks, there's starter grit, which is a very small grit. And there's different types. This is a lot, a layer grit, which, is, which you'll probably be giving your layer hens. Also, your birds need, if your, when your hens start laying, they also need oyster shells. The, your, process, your laying feed has calcium in it, but the chicken laying the eggs will use up that calcium. And you'll go in someday and you'll, you'll be picking up your eggs and you'll find that there's a soft shell. Like, oh, there's an egg with no shell. Just, it's because they need oyster shells. And people tend to get mixed up. They think that grit and oyster shells are the same. It's not, it's two different things. So if your, your hens are laying eggs, they need oyster shells because that gives them the extra calcium that they need for the shells of the eggs. Now, when you're giving them your bird's grit and, and oyster shells, don't, you don't want to mix it in with the feed. What you can do is take, I use a tuna fish can. You can take a tuna fish can, nail it up against the wall, and you can put your grit and your oyster shells in two separate cans. Then when the birds will take what they need. You don't want to mix either of these in with their regular feed. You want to keep that separate. Um, it's not a good idea to give your birds table scraps. It's fine to give them like greens, greens from the garden, but things that you shouldn't give them is um, um, like anything like french fries, anything with, with grease, they shouldn't eat beaten that. Uh, onions, garlic, or fish. If you Eggs, your eggs are porous. If you gave them like eggs, garlic, and fish and things like that, you would taste it in the eggs. You could taste that in the eggs, but they shouldn't have that. <coughs> also, you shouldn't give them uh, uh, avocados and guacamole because the brown seed covering is toxic to the chickens, so they shouldn't have that. But you can give them like greens, you know, from your garden. Uh, you want to avoid fried foods and you want to uh, never give them caffeine or alcohol. You want to avoid anything that's high in fat, sugar, or sugar substitutes. <laughs> no huh? No, no part. 
Okay. A, a, a chicken's body is about 50% water, and an egg is about 65% water. So, and a regular hen, a laying hen, will lead, eat, uh, will drink between one to two cups of water a day, and it depends too on the, the bird's age. Uh, if they're laying in the temperature in the in the summer, they drink a lot more water, and they need a lot of fresh water. In the time of day, most they drink most in the mornings and then at night. If the bird doesn't have, if your chickens don't have water for like 24 hours, it takes them like 24 hours to recuperate. If they don't have water for like 36 hours, then sometimes they can go to a moat and they'll they, they stop laying. So they really need a lot of fresh water. And the water should be like between 50 and 55 degrees. And uh, in, in, in the hot summer, if you, the birds are very, very stressed, here again, you can always add a little bit of electrolytes to their water if they're really, really stressed. In, in the, now, I mean, it's so cold now that the waters are freezing. There are a lot of water warming devices, there's containers that, that you can set your, you know, your, your water on to keep the water warm, or devices that you can put in your water to keep the water from freezing. Um, you want to make sure that your water, you, you, you should clean out, rinse out your, your waterers Every, at least every day, give them fresh water, clean them out, rinse them out, clean them out every day and give them fresh water. Okay, so you've got your, your hens in the barn and they're laying eggs. You want, they're going to start laying eggs. You, they need a place to lay. So, you, so there are different types of nests that, they, that you can use. Um, they, the hens like a, like a quiet, dark place to lay their eggs. So if, and you, you, there are nests, I mean, this is a wooden nest that we made. Um, you can get this, some made out of metal, some made out of plastic. You can even buy kits to turn a five gallon pail into a, a nest for the, for the birds. The important thing with the nest is you want, you need a good, you want something so, like a good uh, amount of shavings in the nest so that, you know, when they lay the eggs, it's going to stay nice and clean. Your nest should have a front on it so that the, the eggs aren't going to roll out and the shavings uh, will, will hold the shavings in. And don't be afraid to fill this, this nest up. Also, you need a board on the front so that the, chick the chickens will jump up on here and then walk into the nest. But you've got to keep it far enough apart from the nest so that they're not going to roost up here at night and then mess in the nest. Also, if you, have, you want your nest to have an angle on it so that they can't sit up here and roost up here at night, and then they'll, they'll, mess, they'll mess in the nest. If you keep your, your nest full of shavings and nice and clean, and when you walk into your barn, just if you, you, know, you look, you don't see any eggs, check to see if the chickens have messed in it. If they've made a mess in it, pick it up, clean it out. Uh, th that way your, your eggs will stay nice and clean. Okay. Another thing that the, your birds need at night is a roost. A roost is like a two by two board that you can either you can either put a make a standing roost in the middle of the, the floor, or you can do something you know build something against the wall. It's a two ideally it's a two by two board because your birds will roost on that at night. Uh, it, especially in the cold weather, when uh, you know, like now where it's so cold, the, if the birds are up roosting, if it's any, you know, two by two, they'll have their feet on the nest, and their breast feathers will keep the, their feet from freezing. So two by two is is what they recommend. Okay. Uh, your hens need 16 hours of daylight to really lay. In the summer, your, your birds will lay very well because you've got enough light, but at this time of year, and in the fall and in the winter, they, they tend to drop egg production because they need 16 hours and you don't have at a much, much of daylight. But you can always put an artificial light. You can always put a light in your barn to give them the 16 hours if you want to keep the egg production up. One problem that you can find with your birds that uh, that are laying eggs is they may eat the egg. You may walk in and go pick up the eggs and you find that 
some of the, the, the eggs are being eaten. Um, some of the things that you can do, well, some of the causes of it is because there may not be enough nests. You should have one nest, per, at least one nest for every four birds. Uh, so if you don't have enough nests, it can be a reason why they're eating them. Um, sometimes like the, the eggs are so soft, the shells are so soft that they need the oyster shells, so they, they break easy and then they'll eat them. And if an egg should happen to break, just break on its own or it falls out of the nest and the birds, the birds will go right to what need it. So, um, if you find a bird that's eating, you can always check their beaks. Usually you'll have the yolk on the beaks and remove them because they're not going to stop. They won't stop eating the eggs. So if you can remo remove, the, remove them, take them out of there. Okay, some of the important disease prevention that you need to keep in mind with your chickens. You don't, you, I mean, you, you're investing your time and your money into these birds and you want your eggs, so you want to pre prevent the birds from getting sick. And one of the best ways is not to let anybody that has chickens in your barn and, don't, and stay away from somebody else that has chickens. Uh, and you should have like a pair of barn boots or barn shoes that you only wear into your barn. And don't wear your barn, your barn shoes or your barn boots to your neighbors to see your neighbor's chickens. And don't wear them to fairs. I know everybody wants to go to fairs and see the chickens. You know, wear, wear other shoes that you're not going to wear in your barn to, to, to fairs and to other people's barns. Ideally, stay away from other, people, so other chickens because you don't want to bring anything to your chickens and you don't want to bring anything to somebody else's. Uh, one problem, that you, another problem you can have with chickens is cannibalism. So, and, they, and they are cannibals. If, if this, a bird gets hurt and there's a little bit of blood on it, they will go after it. They'll kill it. They'll go after it. And one of the causes can be crowding. They, they don't have enough space. Uh, they need enough space where they can run around. And if they can go outside, open the door, let them go outside to avoid some of that. And also enough perch space. They need enough place where they can, enough roofs where they can perch at night. Uh, and also they need places where they can dust bathe. In the, in the summer, you'll see out there outside making holes all over the, the, the air in the lawn so where, where they're doing a dust bath. And the dust bath will help them keep any parasites off them. It helps get rid of parasites. Okay, cold weather, cold weather. The birds tend to eat a lot more in cold weather to keep warm. Uh, and you need to keep the moisture from collecting in the barn. Um, you wanna keep your floors dry. Try to you know, you know, keep your floors dry. Um, what the chickens do to keep warm is that they'll fluff up their feathers, just like the birds outside do, they'll fluff up their feathers to keep themselves warm. So you want to make sure there's no drafts going through your coops that's going to affect that because they need to, to fluff up their feathers to keep themselves warm. Um, so you want to keep, and you want to keep your litter dry and loose. You know, if your litter gets wet, you should change it. Uh, one thing you can do to help keep your litter dry is when you're giving them scratch, throw the scratch on the, on the ground. That way the birds will scratch at it, will scratch the ground, they'll go after to eat the scratch and they'll fluff up the litter and keep it. That way it, can, it will stay dry. One of the big problems in this weather is that the combs and the wattles can freeze. Um, you, you'll notice that they'll get red and they'll get warm and they'll, they'll get dark, they'll get, they'll get black. So you try to keep your birds where it's, they're not going to freeze, where the combs aren't going to freeze. Uh, if you find your bird has a comb that's, that has frozen, you don't want to rub it. What you can do is you can put like a warm cloth on it to try to thaw it out. And then you can always put like an antiseptic, like a neosporin on it, on the area. And you want to isolate that bird so that the, the others aren't going to stop pecking at that comb. It's not a problem. Um, to pre protect the combs before they, they do freeze, you can coat it with a little petroleum jelly. That will kind of help insulate it. 
now in hot weather, the birds can tolerate the cold weather better than they can tolerate the hot weather. In the hot weather, um, they eat less, they need more fresh water, and the egg production may not go down, but the eggs may be smaller and the shells may be a little thinner. If the temperature exceeds 95 degrees, you're gonna start losing them. So you need to keep the birds in a shaded area. If, you ha if you're letting your birds out to free range, if you have brush or trees that they can uh, hide under so that um, they'll have some cool, a cool area. And if in the summer, just leave, if your birds are just laying under a brush or trees, leave them, leave them be, leave them be, don't disturb them in the hot weather. And you'll notice that your birds will tend to hold their wings away from their body. That's a way to cool themselves. But also watch if the birds are like panting, their beaks are open and they're like panting, that's kind of a danger signal. You need to do something. Um, you can wet down the, you know, the coop, or you could even miss the birds with some water if you had to. But if 95 degrees, and you're liable to lose some. They can tolerate the cold, but they can't tolerate that heat. Um, so in the summer, you need to increase the number of waterers and make sure they have plenty of cool, fresh water. Uh, you can add the electrolytes, like I said, you can add the electrolytes if you, if you need to. Um, you want to avoid medicating water in the summer because if the birds don't like the taste, they won't drink it and they need to drink as much as they can. Um, make sure your feed is fresh. In the summer with the hot, humid weather, that's when you could have trouble with your feed. So you want to make sure your feed is in a cool, dry area and you keep it fresh. And you keep it in containers with a tight cover on it so you're not going to get the mice in it. If you feed early in the morning, they're, they're more likely to eat when it's cooler than, than feeding later, later in the day when it's, it's warm. And you need to open windows and doors. You need to get that ventilation going in that barn if it's really, really hot. Uh, you can use a ceiling fan if, if you, you, know, you, you, just, you need it. Uh, and never, never confine the birds to hot spaces. Like, don't put them in cages. Don't put them, you know, confine them in hot spaces in the summer. It's too hot. And let's say you need to provide plenty of shade in the summer. Okay. Also, another thing with your birds, if you you, you need to protect your your birds from predators. Uh, there's a lot of foxes and coyotes and skunks and raccoons around, so you need to protect your birds from all these predators that love chicken dinners. Um, so if you know if you can fence in your area and also fence if you can fence in the top of your pen where the birds are because you've, we've got hawks and owls and things they will go after the birds also. If you start missing eggs, it could be rats or skunks or snakes or possums, raccoons, even dogs or crows will go after eggs. Uh, Never, you, you also never want to let the kids or dogs chase or frighten the birds. Whether the birds are chicks or they're full grown, if they're frightened, what they do is they tend to run for a corner and they, 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 they just pile on each other, one on top of the other, and they'll suffocate, and they suffocate very, very fast. Just a matter of seconds and you can lose half your flock if they, if they, suff if they are crowding and they'll suffocate. So you need to keep the kids and the dogs away from your birds. Okay so, okay, so you've had your chickens in your coop here for a year. What should you do? Uh, probably you need to clean out your, your barn. Like once a year, give your barn a good cleaning. You know, take, a, take out the manure, give it a good cleaning. Uh, take out your waterers, your feeders, and your roosts and your nests, and give everything a good cleaning. And they do recommend, like in the early spring, when the weather's good, you know, give everything a good cleaning. You can use um, bleach. Uh, like a tablespoon of bleach and a gallon of water to clean out your, your feeders and your waterers and all that. But they do recommend it. Once a year is enough to give your barn a good cleaning. So what do you do with the, all that manure that you've gotten out of your barn? You can always use it. You can always compost it. You could put it in your gardens. Uh, one thing you have to remember with the manure, you have to keep it away from water. 
has to be at least 100 feet away from a river or any water source. <coughs> but it's good in the garden, and, you, and they compost good. Even if you're using shavings or hay, whatever you're using, it, it will break down and make beautiful soil for a garden. Okay, uh, some of the, just some of the things that you can keep your litter dry with. Uh, like if, if the chickens may, will jump, okay. the problem, the chickens uh, will, may step, the roosters, the chickens or hens may step on the side of the water dish and tip it over. So then you, you've got a problem with a wet floor. You know, clean it up as soon as you can. That way, to clean it up. Uh, if your roof leaks, repair your roof so you don't have, the floor's not getting wet from, from the roof. You may have to add more litter. As you, I mean, so you put four or five inches of litter, it, of, of shavings in your barn, it's going to break down. It's going to break down, so you may have to add more shavings over the course of time. Um, and you may, it, you know, if, if you find that your barn is getting very wet and you may have, maybe you have too many birds in the barn, so maybe you have to separate the barn, separate the chickens and put less in your barn um, and aerate the litter. You know, like I said, throw scratch on the ground so that the chickens are doing the job for you instead of you. Okay. Uh, any questions? Did I? Okay, starting Did I off, miss anything? <laughs> I think you've done. So you have chicks available in Spencer? Yes, we order them, yep. You we order them, them and you have chicks available so that if people were moving down the, the egg route, they'll have chicks for eggs or do you also do the, uh, the roasters, the fryers? We can do both. We can order them from the company. I usually like to find out what people want and then order what people okay. want. Yeah. And then that way you're safe to not have a whole bunch of roosters. Right, right, right. So that's that's yeah. probably the number one complaint that we have is numbers is of the roosters. roosters. Yes. Oh, and another issue, everybody wants chicks for Easter because they're so cute. But after, but when they grow up, you're gonna get a phone call. I get several phone calls every year. I have some chickens and I don't want them anymore. Do you want them? Say no. Because you don't want your birds are healthy. You don't want to bring in somebody's birds and mix them into your coop. Even if they look healthy, your birds are healthy. You don't know if your birds have a resistance that they don't. You know, so always say no. There, there are more uh, uh, chicken rescues that are popping up now. Where you can refer people, you know, to somebody that will take them. But we shouldn't because we don't want to bring in you know, any bird, any somebody else's chickens into our flock. And the 10-foot yep. rule that you had, does that apply also to the grit and to the oyster shells? No, no, no. that's so more the, for just the feed in the water. Feed, yeah. feed in the water. Feed in okay. the water, yeah. Yep. The, the grit and the oyster shells, you can just put it, you, you know, you, they, they, you don't want to mix it in with their grain. So okay, you, so separate it. Separate it. The grit better. and the oyster shells should be separate, and they'll take what they need. Yeah. Okay. They'll take what they need, yeah. So when you're buying the grit, and the scratch, is that what it's called when you buy it? Right, yes. Okay. It's, this is starter grit and this is layer grit. It depends on the size. Okay, so yep. you go to the grain store and say, I need chicken scratch, Correct. and I need grit, and I need oyster shells. Those are three different, I mean. They're all different. The oyster shells and the grit are two different things, and then the scratch is different than the feed. Right, right? the scratch has is a coarse cracked corn with oats and wheat in it. And you can mix that with their pellets? Or you, you prefer it to be put on the ground, they can get it in, uh, or whenever? You, you could put it in the pan, but usually if you spread it on the ground, then they'll they kind of aerate the, they'll right. aerate the manure, and then yeah, okay. it, keeps it, it keeps the floor dry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's good in the winter. And now in the corn is kind of a hot food, so it's right. good in the winter. Uh, eliminate the corn in the summer. You, know, you can give them oats in the summer. You know, but they don't need the corn in the winter. They need it, especially with the cold weather we've had. Yeah. So that with the corn, it's kind of like giving beet pulp to horses. Yeah. And so, yeah. Sheep too, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. So are there additional Any questions? questions? Questions. Where you, other than clams and truck mm -hmm. supply, mm -hmm. where do you get the stuff, the supplies? Uh, Hardwick Co-op and Hardwick, and then Lester Gar Farm and Garden. They all sell, yeah. and we all sell different types of. Feed. We, we're a blue seal feed dealer. We sell blue seal feed. And we're on Route 31 and Spencer heading north. Yeah. 
And she's always there to I'm answer there. all your questions. <laughs> Mine on Thursday, so <laughs> you will see me there. That fine crack horn, is it any different from the red one? The fine crack horn, it's much fine. This is coarse crack horn. The fine crack horn is finer than this. Fine. Yeah, right. you could give it to. It's a nutrition, a nutrition dog. Oh, no, no, it's the same nutrition. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a finer corn than this, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's for the, for the younger chicks, that's fine. And for the birds, too, the outside birds. Because like I've been the fine. fine crack corn for years. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Good. Rosie. Okay. Well, first, Roseanne, let's thank you very much oh, for coming welcome. again thank and joining you. us in Brookfield. Oh, and I, I'm going to do you. a commercial before we go off oh, the air here for a oh, second. Okay. So grab the chair and rest. There's some <laughs> brochures and whatnot. So we're going to take a recess here in a minute. But I thought before... Uh, the, the uh, television uh, or the YouTube opportunity uh, is lost. I wanted to just do a quick commercial. Oh, okay. So our quick commercial is that Paul Benjamin will be here next month. Paul's going to do a tree trimming exercise as he did uh, a year ago again for those that have fruit trees that want to make sure that they have fruit. So that's on March 18th. Uh, that we're going to be joined by the Worcester, uh, Worcester Ag Commissions here on April the 15th, where Ron Starcher will redo his food safety. So people coming to farmers mar markets with food and whatnot, Ron will give them the instructions on how to do that and do that properly. And we've moved Kate Marquis to May 20th, and she's the local service forester, and we'll be talking about forest programs on May the 20th. And again, you can all find all this information in your citizen if you're from Brookfield, or you can have Sharon's YouTube video and you can listen to it uh, on your TV at, uh, late at night. So with that, I'd uh, motion that we recess for a few minutes so Sharon can shut down and Roseanne can head back to Spencer. People can pick up the information that's here and we'll have the uh, regular part of our meeting here in a few minutes. Thanks, and thanks for joining us on Brookfield Community Media. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs>